guys! Just a quick announcement before today's story begins. Tomorrow, I'll be streaming from 9am to 4pm, playing as many of this year's creepypasta as I can. At 2, I'll be replaying Tea Time, the story from last Halloween, before an early showing of its sequel, Message in a Bottle. If you want to see it before it goes live on YouTube, make sure to join me on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash revolutionaryproductions. I'll be in the chat the entire show answering questions, talking to you guys, and sharing funny anecdotes about this year's Pastaween process. A few of our actors will be joining me in the chat as well, so make sure to give them some love. Now, on to our story. Hello everyone tonight. I like to lick the blood. Out of in the person. I see your handsome face. Don't be so sad about it. Come on. Holy fuck! What the fuck? Did that just happen? Yes, yeah, Skull. Yes, it did. The first thing I should probably note is that I'm Lemon Lime Skull. In other words, that's my screen name up there. That was the first time I saw or heard from Funny Mouth, and for all intents and purposes, it should have been the last. Anyone who's spent enough time chatting away knows that weirdos come and go. Folks pop in to ask insane questions or just to troll a populated channel. What first struck me as odd about the Funny Mouth guy, however, was the fact that he came and went with no particular goal. He didn't try to piss anyone off, and he didn't ask if anyone on the channel knew how to fix his computer or remove a virus. He just stuck his head in, rattled off some random text, and happily fucked off. So, really, though, what the hell? Not see clue. Not a clue. He's in another channel if you want to find out. Blood. I do not, sir. Heh. <laughs> Bitch. I don't know what results I expected from following this guy to another channel. I'm not the type that goes out of his way to annoy or argue with people. I'll usually avoid it at all costs, though once someone starts with me, I don't mind getting into it at that point. I guess what I'm saying is, I have no idea why I pursued this. Hey, he was sitting there on the channel by himself. So, so you're staring at me. That's rude. Sorry, I just do it. It's okay. I see. <laughs> he was weird and inoffensive. You can come back to refer sales if you want. We're not going to boot you if that's what you're worried about. Or not. Whatever, man. You just seemed interesting and I'm bored tonight. I am broad tonight, too. I always don't. You always don't what? I always don't. That's it. I always don't because they don't and then... I get silly. Okay. Well, see you around. And with that, I left. The act got old fast, and I felt either this was someone trying too hard, or a legitimate moron who was unaware of how to properly use a chat program. Sitting idly by yourself and popping into other channels for a split second seemed like a desperate bid for attention. I might have done that and laughed my ass off in around the 90s or so, but yeah, stupid. Hmm? Nothing. I seriously don't know what he was saying. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. What's sad is that, besides you and me, that guy's the only active user here all night. Wake up! Bleh. Silence dominated the channel for about a half hour as I minimized the window and went about my business. Anyone on? Nothing. Eight users in the channel. Not a single one active. Boring. Why are you people so boring? Wake up! It took me a few seconds to see. Funny mouth again. Staring again. I physically slumped my shoulders with a not this shit again sigh. Then I noticed he wasn't in the channel. Huh? Uh, anyone else see him? Of course not. Because you're idle. Obviously, it was a glitch with either my client or the server. The message was kicked up from earlier in the night. At random. Eh, these things happen. Still, it creeped the hell out of me. After a few minutes of sitting there with a really 
cold, creepy feeling in my stomach. That I shouldn't have done something feeling. I decided to stop trying to brave it out and just close the entire chat program. Sure, I could have just hung out like everything was fine. But why bother try to prove I wasn't spooked? Hell, nobody was even around to see me slink away. After a few more hours screwing around on the web, I went to bed around 2.40 a.m. One thing I've always prided myself on is that I do not have nightmares. At least not regularly. Usually if there are monsters or ghosts or nuclear wars in my dream, I have to control it and I have a great time. I'm shooting zombies in the face, outright telling ghosts they're not real while I laugh at them, and if there's some disaster, I always know how to get to the safe spot while every other mf -er fries. I've had maybe four actual nightmares in the past ten years, and yes, I'm completely serious. I'd just broken off a relationship with someone who had been with somebody else for a year behind my back. That night, when I finally did get to sleep, I dreamt she was strapped down to a medical table while some sort of unseen, inexplicable creature sucked her brain out through an organic machine. The brain screamed. Ceaselessly. The second nightmare had me visiting a medical facility where they were experimenting with new methods of saving lives. There's a fantastic tour of this high-tech facility. Lots of wonders of modern science, people in lab coats, etc. Then I was led to a room where three car crash victims had been saved by their techniques. This included a slowly rocking young girl whose face had been completely distended and hung around her chest, and a woman who was nothing but a cluster of twitching severed limbs, all held together by a drawn-out kite-like span of flesh. The third came soon after the second. I was being accosted by two people, one who wanted to insult me to no end, and the other who kept trying to pinch me and tweak me in absurdly ineffective ways. Thinking I could control this dream like the others, I set the two men against each other, thinking it would be a sort of poetic justice. Instead, the pincher became increasingly violent until he was pulling at the other's cheeks, grabbing his tongue with a fist and furiously pulling at it until it came out. Then he pulled the fellow's eyelids until they distended in some sort of grotesque prolapse. I suppose what I'm getting at is that even when I did have nightmares, I was never the actual target of any sort of horror. It's always been a kind of empathetic horror related to someone else getting brutalized. This night, however, was different. As soon as I fell asleep, I started dreaming. Basically, it was a recurring dream I have where I'm in the woods just checking out animals and birds and generally acting chill. I lie in the grass and look up at the sky. It's always a dream I welcome. Because even if I've had a shit day, I wake up happy and ready to start over. This time, the script changed. I laid in the grass, but while I was staring at the sky, I felt something odd. It was a cold, squirming feeling on my neck. In the dream, I reached to my neck and pulled away a long, writhing earthworm. Earthworms disgust me. If I see one in the yard, I specifically get a shovel and a heap of dirt over it, simply so I don't accidentally see it again. Disgusted, but more or less content, I flung the worm aside and continued my dream. Then, that feeling again. Clammy, wet, wiggling against the side of my neck. I pulled another worm away. Again, it happened. The third time, the feeling of confusion and dread became so overwhelming that I immediately snapped myself out of the dream. That's what usually happens when shit gets real in my dreams. Game over. I figured it out, though. At least, I thought I had. In the waking world, I felt my neck and discovered a slick, slimy film on my skin. Logic dictated I must have been drooling in my sleep. Nothing to be proud of, but not exactly terrifying, either. My dreaming mind must have translated the icky feeling into an appropriate creature in the forest dream. Perhaps more unsettling, though, was the fact that the bed around me seemed to have indentations. Four, to be exact. It was almost as if someone on hands and knees had been hovering over me as I slept. There was any number of reasons that could have happened, but from then on that night, I slept very lightly. Any little thing, like the sound of a ceiling fan, would wake me up straight away. I had no real interest in going back to the woods that night. When morning came around, I got ready to take off, to get out of the house and shake the cobwebs out. 
I only planned to check my email real quick to make sure I didn't have any pending transactions or questions I had to answer. Surprise! I had a good time to talk to you. It can be fun again, you'll see what? I don't like stop it. As you probably recall, I haven't given this asshat my email address. However, logical answer, someone else on the channel must have. He obviously came back to refer sales, asked someone who I was, and that douchebag completely betrayed me, knowing I don't give up my personal contact info. Although, the email was dated 240. That was pretty much the moment I went to bed, when everyone on the channel was still idle. Even though I well and truly knew that I was taking some sort of bait, I responded. Um, yeah, bro. Not exactly sure I want you emailing me. It was clear and to the point. There was no mistaking the message I was sending, and I thought it was snippy. I wasn't goading him into replying by starting a flame war. But, of course... Come on, don't be so sad about it. I know you can like it, we will have fun a lot of the time. It's okay, even. And with that, I blocked his address. Really, I should have done that in the first place, but I still had some sick sort of interest in exactly where this was going. Maybe if I put my foot down, he would just admit he was screwing around and call me humorless wet blanket. When I saw it was just the same old bullshit, that gave me the green light to go ahead and shut the guy out. For what it's worth, you can relax at this point. The blocking stuck. There was no follow-up message circumventing the ban. After a few minutes, I assured myself that was all over and I went about my day. It wasn't until I got home at dusk that the cold, squirming feeling in my stomach started all over again. And I had no idea why. Well, that's not entirely true. I had some idea. I checked my email. Nothing from Funny Mouth. However, there was an email from George. Hey, ReferSales.com is fucked up. I can't get this shit to load. When you're in line, can you please look at it ASAP? Peace and carrots, George. Blood. Lull Skeletons, added by Lull Skeletons. I let out a string of curses. Downtime meant lost sales, and I'd been out all day with no way for George to contact me. If I'd been a little less strict with my personal info, he could have just called me. I loaded the site and waited for some sort of error screen. Instead, it began to reroute to another page. Blood.com Yeah, I see it. It's redirecting to a website with a giant pixelated face with a messed up tongue. I think this has to be that funny mouth piece of shit. Did you give him my email? With the domain in it? Charles Watts. It's a 404 page, not a redirect. Wanna know what you're smoking? All I can get on blood.com is a coming soon notice. Didn't give anyone shit. George. Ha ha ha. Funny. Then George emailed me a screenshot of the site giving a 404 error, along with a coming soon notice for blood.com. He could have easily faked them. Why? I mean, if this was some sort of joke, it was pretty abstract, and I didn't get it. When I looked at my website files, everything was normal. Nothing was out of place, and nobody had even logged in to change anything. I checked the domain name's name servers, the thing that routes the domain where it's supposed to go, and nothing was out of sorts. But still, there was this bloated, tongue-wagging face looking back at me with its empty eye sockets. Then, I don't know how I missed it in the first place, Looking closely, the picture of the face wasn't really pixelated. It was made of tiny letters, HTML code coloring each letter specific to the image. Over and over again, the word that made up the image was right in front of me. Funny mouth, funny mouth, funny mouth, funny mouth, in a great cluster of nonsense. I felt like spitting at the screen. I unblocked his email address and set about writing an incredibly profane and threatening letter. I didn't really care if I got the site back at this point. I just wanted to get everything off my chest so I could feel like I was in control of the situation again. Before I could finish the letter, I got this weird, creepy feeling again. That, no, it couldn't be. Feeling where you know you're being absurd, but at the same time, you know you're right. I stopped hacking out my death threats and checked the inbox. I see your handsome face. Hello, buddy. Come on. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I don't want to not. I don't think about it, please, though. I see your handsome face. Not only was that feeling correct, 
the feeling that he had already emailed me the minute I unblocked him, but it seemed he had steadily been emailing me non-stop since I had blocked him. Ten more letters arrived just within the time span it took me to reply. Fucking stop! I was getting a stress headache. My heart was pounding, not from fear, but from rage. This was probably the most absurdly infuriating person on the internet, and that's saying a lot. Thankfully, the string of letters did indeed stop. I tried to calm myself down, breathing deeply. But it didn't seem to take. I was still incredibly pissed. Slowly, methodically, I sent him another note. Hi. I don't understand what you're saying, and I do not understand what you want. I think there may be a language barrier. Is your first language English? I think you've done something to my website, and I would like you to undo it. If you're mad at me, I did not intend this to happen. You may have misunderstood what I said, or what I meant. Please change my website back, and let's both go our separate ways. Thank you, Charles Watts. I waited. I thought about how I'd conquered my anger, and that this measured response was really the best way to go about it. This fellow would understand what I meant. He'd realize the mistake he made. I calmed down. Everything was going to be okay. Then... I hit the roof. I hit the goddamn roof and went clear through it. I smacked the monitor with my palm, knocking it clear off the desk. That pissed me off even more, as I drove my fist into the keyboard repeatedly until the keys flew free. I screamed out in a mixture of frustration with myself and rage over the situation and stormed out of the room, knocking down anything and everything I could get my hands on. For as long as I could manage the energy, I laid waste to my own shit. I would have started a fire and burned down the fucking place if I had a lighter on hand. That night, I stared at the ceiling what felt like an eternity before sleep came. Waiting for sleep, I knew I was going to have a nightmare. I just knew it. That was how my luck was going. Imagine how surprised I was, even in sleep, when instead of some horrific setting, I was someplace safe. The woods. I laid in the grass again. I felt the relaxation. I knew... Even my subconscious knew that everything would be okay. No matter what setbacks life threw at me, the world would go on. Nothing was permanent. Everything was in transition. Nobody could really get to me. I felt the squirming against my neck. Nope. No dice. Nothing could spoil this right now. I ignored the worm. It would go away. I felt the squirming move to my mouth. Now, I couldn't will myself awake. Every other time, I'd been able to decide to wake up, but it seemed like that opportunity had now passed. Then it wasn't a worm. It was a finger, and then another. Then more until four slimy, squirming digits were locked around my teeth, clutching my lower jaw. It didn't hurt when it happened. It was just sort of like a pop. More pressure than pain. It was quick. And before I even knew what was going on, it was over. I then managed to force myself awake. I sat up and got to my feet in complete darkness. Feeling my way around the walls, I made my way to the bathroom. There, I finally flicked a light switch. I stood before the mirror, rubbing my eyes as the harsh light blinded me. I stared into the mirror for minutes on end with no reaction, no feelings. No thoughts. Then I smiled. I smiled as best I could, now that my jaw was completely broken, hanging loose around my neck. My tongue lolled out listlessly, like a paralyzed, gooey slug. My teeth weren't rooted in anything but threads of flesh, and I could pull them out by hand with about the same discomfort as a needle prick. <laughs> I laughed. The halting sound coming out like the gurgle of a backed-up sewer drain. What a handsome face. What a funny mouth. A funny mouth. A funny mouth. Funny mouth. Funny mouth. I see your handsome face. Don't be so sad about it. Hey, where the fuck were you? Hello? Charles? I've entered blood. Sitting idly by for yourself and... Fuck. Sitting idly by by your... Wait, 
probably buy yourself. Oh, okay. But why bother to try to... Sure, I could have just hung out like everything was fine, but why bother try to prove I wasn't spooked? Why bother to English? Okay, at least not regularly. At least not regularly. Regularly. And if there's some disaster, I always know how to get to a safe spot while every other Emmer ever fry. Emmer ever? What the f? And if there's some disaster, I always know how to get to the safe spot while every other MF or dies. Fries. Fuck. I always know how to get to the safe spot while every other motherfucker dies. I still said dies. Wow. I could go for some fries right now. I'd just broken off a relationship with someone who'd been someone else. <laughs> there's a Fantastic Four of this high-tech facility. Lots of wonders and modern science. People in lab coats, etc. I said Fantastic Four. <laughs> well, that's not entirely sure. What? Is your first language English? English. I hit the goddamn Ruth one. Ruth. Goddamn. <laughs> like a paralyzed glue. Shit. Gluey slugs. Hey guys, do you like our content? Do you want to support the show? Click the link in the description below to visit our donation page. All proceeds go towards new and better equipment and games you want to see us play. Everyone who donates will get a special shout out at the end of future videos, and we're currently working on setting up some special perks for you. If you don't want to donate, that's okay too. You can support us by subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. Happy Pasta Ween, everyone! Thank you so much for checking out today's story. A big thank you to my friends Cooper and Digiblade for helping me out today. Make sure to give them some love. Links in the description down below. If you want to see yesterday's story, click that box on the left. Or if you want a revelation, go check out our latest Let's Voice Act series. Thanks for watching. Stay creepy, everybody.